who have come together to host this leadership summit. We have brought to you today five erudite and completely amazing professionals from different walks of life, and they will be taking us on various subject matters. We believe that what we're going to learn today will not only help us at, at such a time as this, which is uh, this pandemic period, and how so many changes have occurred in the workplace, but would also help us going forward. And we're going to take away a lot of lessons from today. My name is Bumi Akou, and I am one of the HR leaders for the community groups. With me here is the governor. Her name is Tosin Oyebola. I would also introduce the other community leaders that we have here, Nonso Damiro, Sheika Inde Peters, Emma Clark, Tinuke Bosun Okusaga, Remy Ogundairo. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Now, the objectives of the summit is to provide a collective means of updating career professionals on global contemporary leadership best practices. We believe that the summit is especially necessary given the current operating environment of business and governance community, which is being severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Glory Edozian today, he's going to take us on how to maximize LinkedIn for professional growth. Bumi Balogun will take us on policy and governance implications for HR leaders as a result of the pandemic. Taiwo Dayo Abaton will take us on why we need more to survive in the workplace beyond technical expertise. Why For me, you need to unmute your mic, please. You're still mute. You're fine now. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, Bumi Balogun will take us on policy and governance implications for HR leaders. Taiwo will take us on beyond technical expertise. Mr. Boston Tijani will take us on leading in a digital era. And Mr. Bola Abolade is going to take us on how the pandemic is affecting leadership structure in a digital world. We believe that these subjects are really very important for us now and in the future to help us survive in the workplace. Without further ado, I'm going to bring in and call in Ms. Tosi Oyebola to officially open the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bumi, and thank you to all of the HR professionals, community group leaders. Thank you for putting this together once again. Uh, welcome, everyone. A very beautiful afternoon to everyone uh, in the room right now. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, the type of sunshine we've been experiencing recently, uh, even though we're supposed to be in the middle of the rainy season is signal to us that our victory in Christ remains sure, irrespective of whatever crisis we may be facing at the moment, whether as individuals or because of the pandemic going around the world. Someone said earlier today that we should learn to come up for air, uh, irrespective of the kind of pressure we may be facing. Um, we need to refresh, we need to regain, regain uh, strength, and then also take that strength to get back to the grind. It's my prayer that despite what you may have experienced this year, uh, you find rest and strength in the hands of God for renewed hope and life to make an indelible mark in our world. Once again, you're welcome to the Leadership Summit. Today is about leadership, and some may wonder why we had to focus on this topic or this subject separate from last week's uh, Learning Summit. Well, I asked myself the same question and got, and, and to get answers for myself, I had to go back. For me, I always go back to the basics. Uh, what is the root word, or, or root meaning for, for leadership, you know? And what I found, found was quite interesting. It's, it's not something that started in the, in the 1990s. It's, it's, it dates way back to the 1560s. Uh, so leadership is not a new concept. We just happen to be, uh, I guess, sharpening our, our capabilities, our knowledge of it uh, as we grow along the line. Uh, to do that, to sort of provide some understanding or context to leadership is to deconstruct the word itself into the three parts that it forms, ship, the core word lead, 
and of course the leader in, in the word. The ship depicts from a uh, uh, root meaning of words, depicts a rank or position, for example, as in ambassadorship. In other words, it's a role that you play, say, for example, between yeah, yeah, the liaison between two, two countries or a class of humans. So if you say craftsmanship, for example, it means it's a group of craftsmen, craftsmen or entrepreneurship, a group of people who do business. Or it could be a state or a condition, kinship, partnership. In other words, ex explaining the relationship between two people. So that explains the ship and the word leadership. Now, the, the, it gets more interesting when you look at the core word itself, lead, which means to guide, to bring forth, to cause to go with oneself, to march ahead of, to go before as a guide, to accompany and show the way, to sprout forth, to bring forth, to be in first place. It's interesting that you don't hear words like control, you don't hear words like dominating and, and all of that, or force. It's guiding, it's bringing forth, it, it suggests something about growing people, you know. And then of course, a leader is one who leads, who does all of that, who guides, who accompanies and shows the way. And I, I like particularly that phrase, accompanies and shows the way. It reminds me of a particular meme that's popular on the internet or on social media where you see a diagram of a leader who is pointing people to where they should go, versus, which, who was called a boss, versus a leader mm -hmm. who actually is pointing the way, but actually the first on in the line. That's what a leader really is. Somebody who guides, accompanies, and shows the way for others to follow. So I can see that leadership is being in the position of capacity, or capacity to be first, to lead the way, to guide others, to bring forth, or to accompany and show the way. Now to link leadership to our current context, that is leadership for HR professionals. First, I will ask that you remember the core message from last week's learning summit, which, which said that our, our objectives as HR, professional, HR professionals is to support the business to achieve its objectives by bringing out the best in our organization's human resources. We profess, in other words, we say that this is what we are good at, that we understand people very well. We are skilled enough to know how best to manage them for success. That's what we say we are. We are experts at human resource management. What we say invariably when we say that is that we can lead, i.e. guide, accompany, and show the way, be the first, much ahead of others. We can lead the organization to bring forth the best in our people. To lead, that is to guide, show the way, means that we are one, visible enough for people to follow, pun intended, visible, LinkedIn, social media, so that they can follow you. <laughs> but in the real sense, actually. It means that we understand how organizations are governed. Otherwise, how can we lead them? Leading our organizations to maximize people potential means that we can skillfully meander people potential sorry, we can skillfully meander the social and political nuances in our workplaces to influence others to follow. It means that we do not only understand the impact of environmental factors on our businesses, but we can seek opportunities in them and lead our organizations effectively. And how will leadership be effective today in our digital world, except we master technology enough to skillfully ride its side? Knowing the technicalities of HR is great. That is good content. We actually do need that. But it will amount to nothing if we cannot lead our organizations to do the technical things that we know. The same way the CFO will lead the business in finance management, or the CTO will lead the business in technology. We must be willing and ready, skillful at leading the business in leading the people. Indeed, here lies the crux of transformational leadership and the very essence of this leadership summit. To provide the information that you require to define a vision. Remember from last week, we said, actually what our vision should be is HR implications for the Hi, Tosin, you're on mute. I'm fine now. 
Yes. Hello. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. So I want you. I welcome you once again to the summit that will position you for impactful HR leadership. Today we will cover topics such as leading in a digital era, the impact of COVID nineteen on policy, governance, and leadership structure, the importance of emotional, social, and political intelligence in performing our roles as HR professionals effectively. There are five sessions today, and I'm privileged to introduce the very first speaker who will be speaking on how to maximize LinkedIn for professional growth. Her name is Glory Edozian. Glory Edozian is a LinkedIn visibility coach and lead consultant at the Inspired by Glory Academy, where she teaches mid to senior level career women on how to build visibility and establish thought leadership on LinkedIn so that they can get the kind of recognition that they deserve and more money and climb the corporate ladder. Our personal coaching clients and course participants have received high profile appointments, key partnerships, commendations in their careers, published in recognized media, launched their own platforms, gotten clarity on their thought leadership brands and their next career moves. To date, she has provided training and coaching services for over 500 women. Glory is an alumnus of the World Economic Forum Global Shapers and has been listed as one of Nigeria's 100 most inspiring women. She has featured in many notable magazines and platforms and holds a PhD in real estate in planning and planning from the University of Reading UK. She is a certified expert in climate change and renewable energy finance and regularly consults on climate change policy documents. Ladies and gentlemen, with your comments in the chat box, thumbs up, and other fun emoticons, please welcome our first speaker, Glory Edozier. Glory, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Can everyone hear me? Good afternoon. Yes, Glory, we can hear you. We can hear you. I have a happy face today because, yes, I'm muted, but now I'm muted now. Can you hear me? Yes, it's a yes. drag. I think it's your connection, but Hello? Yes, we can, yes, we can hear you now. Hello, Glory. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Um, I just put on my Instagram that I'm wearing my happy face this afternoon because I get to talk about one of my most exciting topics, which is LinkedIn visibility. Um, so thank you for the privilege of this invitation. I'm also so it's me to be speaking. My my my. Christians and other as well. I'm so excited. Asia. So today I'm going to be sharing about LinkedIn visibility, how to max LinkedIn um, for professionals. Thank you very much for the introduction that um, I'll allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Gloria Dozian. So as you said, LinkedIn visibility. And what I do is I help it's a senior level career executives in Africa, deep professional credibility, thought leadership. So when I introduce myself, I usually kind of a career I always get that question, like, can you explain that? And so to tell people what I do, I typically share a story, right? So let me tell you the short story. My story is called The Tale of Four Women, The Tale of Four Women. So uh, my friend, her name is Bumi, um, she was recently trying to apply for a high level position at um, she's very experienced. She has 15 years of it in FinTech, and she's also a investor. So this position she was applying for, she had to fill out a, a personal statement form. It's very competitive, and they asked her certain questions on the form that she had difficulty answering. The first one, they asked her to provide senior level endorsements from recognized professionals in her sector. Problem. My friend Bumi has been doing great work, but is not well connected. She doesn't have a network. They now asked her, 
okay, can you provide recommendations, um, online recommendations, proof of thought leadership, articles that you've published to demonstrate proficiency in your field? Zero. She didn't have anything to show. And then the final question they asked her, do you attend events as a speaker? And she was like, when she was complaining to me, she said, Glory, this was such a simple question, yet my answer was still no. Why? Bumi has been doing great work, but she's been working in science. Now, I three of my clients is um, one of my clients, senior health policy advisor. Um, Adele and I were working together the last day. She's been many she's been her work which is the foremost of the development platform she seen news and communication also picked up university school of health my client is um, ijoma ijoma is a talent development specialist and recently during when COVID-19, unfortunately, she lost her job. She's working in the oil and gas sector. So you expect that she's down and out, you know, really worried. But no, she's thriving. She's been approached to feature her articles on leading events. She's made opportunities for collaboration. She didn't eat. Another of my clients, um, Oyinda Desui, she's a private management expert. And she has watched, and she says she reached out to her for speaking engagement, requesting her opinion on subject matters. And she's growing, becoming a thought lead industry. This is what LinkedIn was for. So, in three women with Bumi, Bumi had been doing hard work. These other three women as well have been working really hard. But the, the difference here is that while Bumi has been working hard in silence, staying at the back of her desk, working nine to nine and really long shifts, these people have been making efforts to showcase their work to a broader audience. And this is what LinkedIn does for you. It positions as an expert field. It can make you top of mind to stakeholders, decision makers and influencers. So when they think of a problem, your name becomes a solution to that problem, right? It lets you know about opportunities before they become public. I can't tell you the amount of times I've been sitting in my room and I get an email from LinkedIn or a WhatsApp message and somebody says, oh, Glory, there's this social and so opportunity. Are you interested? An opportunity I never even dreamt existed, right? It can help you build a global brand. I will show you how later, because LinkedIn has close to 700 million users across the entire world. So it's not just about building a network in Lagos or wherever your city is, but across the world. And obviously it can give you speaking opportunities, features and high level publications, but most importantly, it helps you to build industry relevance. So, but why should you bother? So you may be saying to me, Gloria, I work in a great company. I'm actually okay. Hi, Gloria. I earn a salary. My salary is not bad. You've Hi, lost Gloria. me again. No, 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 yes. no, no, we can hear you. Can, can you please put on slideshow so we can All see right, clear? Sure. Thank you. Okay, sure. All right. So maybe you're saying, Thank why you. should I bother? Gloria, I have a good job. You know, my job is fine. You know, I earn a good pay. I'm actually, I'm actually a bit okay. I don't really need all of this wahala with branding. But let me tell you the truth. The game has changed. Remember when you were in secondary school and the teacher would ask, or even university, one plus one equals, and everybody would raise up their hand, teacher I, teacher I, and they would point to somebody and then you answer the question. Or, you know, we, you would study really, really hard, go through past question papers, go and sit for the exam, and you would get high scores. Well, in the world of work, <laughs> Things have changed. It's no more necessarily the people that work really hard that get the best of all of the opportunities. In fact, research has shown that your visibility has become directly related to promotability, right? And in terms of the future of work, I mean, many of you, you guys here are HR professionals, so I don't even have to go into that. The way employers are getting very savvy about how they hire these days, right? It, to be successful in the future, you have to improve how you advertise. I mean, who would you, somebody who has built with jobs or someone who has a unique and is a record with connection of the job. 
career, how you communicate your skills, your networks, and professional reputation is going to be really, really key in this emerging in professional brands will soon a consumer brand. So how do you get to point B? How do you move from a place where no brand, no professional credibility or recognition, or no thought leadership, like my friend I was sharing about earlier, Blue Way, to recognize professional, how do you do that? That's what we're going to do today. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you four key things. I'll be showing you the true power of LinkedIn and what it can do for your career, mistakes you're making on LinkedIn that's preventing your profile from being visible. I'll be sharing with you my number one networking tip, as well as how to demonstrate credibility and remain top of mind with key decision makers. So let's get started. My, the first thing I want to establish here is the power of LinkedIn. What I teach people is, Visibility is the art of letting people know what you are capable of and your impact as a professional. So capability plus impact equals value. So for example, you know that you, are, you have great presentation skills, but if you don't know how that present, those great presentation skills leads to key business results, your value is very difficult for you to communicate your value. Right? So you must understand that this great presentation skills helps you in business development, helps you to acquire new clients that leads to revenue generation for the company. Right? But more importantly, visibility is not about fame. Right? It's about communicating your value to the right people. So why is this important? Research has shown that visibility is the most important factor for advancement. So research published in 2016 in the Harvard Business Review there, um, some researchers went to Silicon Valley and they um, interviewed um, top executives in Silicon Valley and they asked them questions about their career advancement. What was responsible for career advancement? And more than technical competence, business results, or team leadership ability, visibility emerged as the most important factor for their advancement. So we now know visibility is important, but why LinkedIn? Today, LinkedIn has well over 600 million users. In fact, the number is closer to 700 million. And a high percentage of those people are senior level influencers, people in decision-making positions, opinion leaders, C-level executives, and 90% of recruiters say they use LinkedIn. If you're even searching for broad positions, a lot of um, executive consultants are on LinkedIn searching for, for people to recommend for board level opportunities. I can't tell you the amount of senior women I've worked with who are like, Glory, I'm trying to position for board level opportunities and my LinkedIn has to reflect my professional competence. So it follows that LinkedIn is the largest professional network in the entire world. There is no platform, no WhatsApp group. I mean, it's great that we have our WhatsApp groups. I'm not saying we should do away with them, but it is really the best place to grow influence in your sector, market your skills, build a global network, get the opportunities you deserve and build relevance in your career. So now that I've hopefully convinced you that LinkedIn is the place to be, right? Think about it this way. On, especially during the cold COVID season, a lot of businesses kept afloat because they were using Instagram. A lot of businesses are using Instagram to reach their target consumers. That is what LinkedIn does for professionals. It helps you to remain visible, to build a community of, fan, of fans around the work you do and helps you to attract big opportunities as well. So how do we leverage that platform? Let me, but before we start, let me ask you a question. Are you proud of your LinkedIn profile? So I just wanna see it in the chat. If you can just tell me in the chat, are you proud of your LinkedIn profile? Does it demonstrate your true capability, right? Or is it a digital CV holder? And when was the last time you updated your profile? So just let me know. Are you proud of your LinkedIn profile? And when was the last time you updated your profile? So let me just see. A lot of people are saying no. Okay, a few yeses in the room. Okay, when was the last time you updated your profile? A lot of no's in the room. A lot of no's. Okay, somebody said yesterday. In 2016, somebody said 2016, okay, a month ago, fantastic, okay, a month ago, a month ago, fantastic, okay, okay, more than a year ago, June 2020, unfortunately, all knows, can't remember, oh wow, last month, almost three years ago, fantastic, fantastic, well, you're not alone, I've done this, these presentations in many places, and a lot of people have similar, um, are saying similar things, okay, so let's go on.
So which house would you like to spend a weekend in really quickly? House A or house B? <laughs> which house would you like to spend a weekend in? It's already gave you a ticket now to go on holiday. You know, which house would you want to spend a weekend in? House A or house B? Of course. <laughs> Of course, you want to stay in house A. House A, you're already imagining how they're going to bring that breakfast, you know, breakfast in bed, how the sheets will look, everything. House B, you're like, no thanks, you know. Okay, so online, as HR professionals, you already know this. How long do you spend on a CV? It's the same thing on LinkedIn, right? How long are you really going to spend on somebody's profile? You only have five to 10 seconds to impress a potential employer online. Right? So how do you impress a potential employer or decision maker? How do you move your, your LinkedIn profile from a house B to a house A? It's by reducing these mistakes, which I'm going to go through one by one. Incomplete profile, not future proofing your profile, using buzzwords instead of keywords, not telling your career story or the, showing the depth of your experience. If your visibility settings are off and resume versus resource. And I'll talk, take these things one by one. So one, Incomplete LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn users with complete profiles are 40 times, not two, not three, 40 times more likely to receive opportunities through LinkedIn, right? So you need to aim for a complete LinkedIn profile. How do you know if you have a complete LinkedIn profile? If you go on your LinkedIn profile today, just underneath where your um, the headline is, you see something called your dashboard. Now, in this dashboard, if you see all star, it means that all the sections are complete. However, if you see something like this, which is a barometer, it means that there are sections in your profile that you need to complete. And LinkedIn will tell you what you need to do. Maybe it's to add skills, add your bio and things like that. So first things first, make sure you have an all-star LinkedIn profile so you can actually be in the game. The second thing is <laughs> not about having, just having an all-star LinkedIn profile, right? Because LinkedIn is garbage in, garbage out. You can have an all a complete LinkedIn profile that is not helping you. It does not include the right words. It does not include, you know, the right things. And I'll be getting to that now. The first thing is not future proofing your profile. You don't create a LinkedIn profile for the job you have. You create it for the job you want because you already have the job you have. <laughs> So the point of LinkedIn is that it's meant to be a resource. It's meant to unlock opportunities. So it's not about the job you have, but about the one you want. So how do you do that? The mistake a lot of us make is we think our job titles is enough. Now, of course, if you work for some high flying company and you are the executive director, blah, 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 blah. Yes, that's good. But for most of us, that may not be the case, right? Your LinkedIn headline needs to dazzle. I always use this example. It's like buying a house in Banana Island. The build a skyscraper, the one that has pillars, the one that they import the roof from Japan. Do you know, you go all out, and that's what your LinkedIn headline needs to do. It needs to dazzle. So, who would you call for an interview? A VP, if you could call one person for an interview, who would you pick? VP product development and marketing at both, or VP product development both, growth specialist. I help African startups get their first 100,000 customers. This is what takes your LinkedIn profile from the same to extraordinary because this person has sat down to think what remember what i was talking about earlier about capability plus impact equals value this person has sat down to think how does my job and if you listen to the service this morning how does the work that i'm doing how does it translate to business results this is what one of the things that Pastor was talking about this morning it is the person i said i'm the vp product development at both but what i really do is i help you get customers i help um, products, I help products get their unique customers. So this person has understood how their skill and how their capability relates to, translates to business results. Another thing is using keywords, is using keywords, using buzzwords rather instead of keywords. <laughs> so I'm a passionate, skilled HR professional, HR enthusiast, hardworking, reliable, consummate speaker. Nobody goes on LinkedIn to search for these words. <laughs> so you are using buzzwords. They sound nice in the mouth, passionate, skilled. You know, they sound passion. They sound nice to say, but they're not doing anything for you. Nobody searches for these words on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, skills are everything, right? The power. Those are the power words that you use to um, demonstrate your expertise on LinkedIn. That is what makes you visible. Not these generic terms. So move from the generic to the specific terms in your. So like what? 
like if you are if you are um, a marketing communications professional, maybe your area of expertise is digital marketing. Because if they are looking for somebody to fill a specific role, that's probably what they are looking for. They are looking for someone who has experience or proficiency in digital marketing. Now, another mistake I see, and it's really women that make this mistake a lot, is your visibility settings are off. <laughs> visibility settings are off. Right? Everything, but nobody can see you. Why? Why? So I Google your name, and then even let's say you even have a common name, like Adiola Abiola or something like that, right? And there are 15 Adiola Abiolas on, on LinkedIn or something. I can't even find you among all of that. There's nothing that differentiates you, right? You don't have a LinkedIn profile picture. All of these things severely hinders your ability to be visible on LinkedIn. So how do you solve these problems? The first one is complete your profile, right? And change your visibility settings. So just go to your profile, go to settings, go to visibility settings and change it so you're discoverable. That's really easy. The second is sit down and get clarity around your career future. What really do you want to achieve in your career, right? What's next for you in your career? And what Required for my needs. They don't like about skills that I do next to. Result of your experience and the problems you solve. This is how you start to create powerful LinkedIn. But the biggest mistake of all, a lot of times people just come and date their LinkedIn profile and they think that you need to move from your LinkedIn resume, your LinkedIn resume, and use it as a resource. If you forget anything I say today, remember this. You're, you already have a CV. Your CV is already digital. You can email it around the world, right? What you need is a resource, not another resume. And that's what your LinkedIn should be. Your LinkedIn should be opening doors while you are seeing by meetings. While your, your LinkedIn should still be speaking for you. And this is, you build a network. A network that is aware of you. It's not just everybody into your nest and only trying to, you have to create industry to your credibility, right? And social proof of your competency, recommendations, endorsements, and you need to build thought leadership. So I'm going to show you how before I start rounding up. So networking on LinkedIn, how do you build a network? Another thing I don't want you to forget. So the first thing I said you must not forget is your LinkedIn, you move your LinkedIn from a resume to a resource. Second thing is, your LinkedIn network must reflect your career goals. What are you trying to achieve in your career? Short, long-term, medium-term. How is your network helping you to achieve that? And to do that, you need to have a networking strategy. So for example, I'm on LinkedIn to find clients and to get opportunities. And I've sat down to think, who are the people that can help me unlock these opportunities? Who are my key clients? HR leaders, decision makers, mid to senior level executives, conference organizers, speaking engagements, international journalists, because I want to have international features. And I am intentional, painstakingly so intentional about attracting and communicating these people on my, in my network. So let me give you an example. Now, what happens is when you get into, LinkedIn is kind of like Instagram, right? So if you, have you ever noticed on Instagram, maybe you send somebody a DM or you like somebody's pictures maybe once or twice, and then all of a sudden, any day you wake up, as soon as you go on Instagram, that's the first person, first person's picture you've seen, right? Because you've told Instagram, I like this person, I'm communicating with this person. So Instagram wants to keep you engaged. So it keeps showing you those people's pictures. It's the same for LinkedIn. Whatever you tell the system is whatever it will give back to you. So if you are accepting everybody, LinkedIn will keep recommending everybody to connect with you. If you keep comment um, um, to without any specific criteria, you keep recommending without any specific criteria. But if you start a good you will start seeing just becoming a bit more achieved. So, for example, with very um, love chat. I love chat. 
So these are two email connected decisions. The first is South Africa, physician specialist. In South Africa. And she sent me a message, said, I like your profile and what you do. I would like to connect. The second person is an executive director and he, um, he sorry, external affairs director. And he sent me a message. This was in December last year. A message connecting with what I do is if you send me a message and you know, we'll connect, I will always say thank you. Reply, he says, building most social practice wishes for the seat of some sense to me. This is what I'm talking about. Be getting an opportunity for tonight. Your network, your career aspirations, right? Can your network help you achieve? Yes? Can you hear me? Have you lost me? Uh, you, I think your yeah. network is, is your your network is really uh. Hello. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. It's really if you can hear me, it's really unclear from your side. I think the network is really poor. Are you there? Okay, for, for, for those who, uh, while we're waiting for Glory to get back, um, if you have questions, questions at least for the part, I know some, some people are saying that um, the audio is um, not so clear. Please send in your questions to the chat room, uh, whatever questions you have, so that we can take our questions uh, very quickly. Glory, are you still there? Hello? Yes, we can hear you now, Glory. Yes, I, I think, hello. Yes, I can hear. Okay, I think we just quickly take a couple of questions so we can round your session up. Sorry, I know the internet was a bit uh, bad, so we couldn't hear you for the later part of the presentation, but we have a couple of questions that we'd like to ask so that we can use that to round up your session, if that's okay. Sure, that's fine. Okay, somebody asked, um, uh, is there a way that they can upload certificates or awards on LinkedIn? Is that beneficial from your own perspective? Since you say it should be a resource, not a yes. resume. You know, that's yes. one question. And then yes. the uh, other question, well, trick question, but they say, can you please share specific words that can be used for LinkedIn profile for an HR officer or HR professional? Okay, so it depends on what your specific um your, spe your specialties in HR are. So for example, you know, are, are you a recruitment specialist? Are you a generalist? Um, you know, what, what are your, your specific skills in HR, your specialties in HR? I would suggest that you use that. Okay, then, then can you please shed a bit more light? When you say make your, your, your profile should be more of a resource than a resume, can you please shed a bit more light on that? Yeah, I was, I was going to, that was the last part of my presentation. So do you mm -hmm. want me to just summarize that? Please, please do. Thank you. Uh, you, can, you can summarize that and, and use that to round up your, your, your session. Okay, so the, the, the important thing, the important part about using your, your LinkedIn profile as a resource is really going beyond just having a profile, right? So making sure you have the right network and creating content that demonstrates your expertise. So if you think about, for example, um, um, Instagram, where you have a lot of um, influencers on Instagram, how they keep their community engaged and how they grow their brand and demonstrate what they do is by putting a lot of content, right? So they are always sharing pictures, they are sharing quotes, you know, they are sharing testimonials. And that is, that helps you to build, 
helps helps their professional reputation to build in your mind. So it's the same for LinkedIn. It's really about sharing content around the things you are knowledgeable, around the things you want to be known for. So that's how we summarize that. Okay, thank you very much, Gloria. I know there's still a lot of questions. If they want to reach you for more information, other engagements, how, how can they reach you, please? Um, Glory, my email address is Gloria at inspiredbyglory.com. Okay, if you don't mind, can you please uh, add that to the chat?